That where I'm from, little daddy. You ain't from that. That where I'm from, little daddy. You ain't from that. California caution, that chronic bird, get me burned that. California up in that. You know we keep you live by slapping Mac Dre and too short. We smoking new boys, Mac of the year. Feeling like you're down, it's going down in my section. California, you know I'm whipping. Ain't no California bird, we have to have a penny. Full fast, friends, know you already know we in it. Ay, that where I'm from, California, I A. Blowing no cookies or I might got cracks. Ain't no stress, now you already know we got shack. We pass out to the OGs who smoke that shack. Now understand this, boys, Cali, man. California coach, you keep it cracking. What's going on? What's crack a lacking? What it do? What's smacking? You back here at the age of the Don Live and tuned in with the podcast. You know, it's me, of course, Don Luca. You already know what it is. It's your boy, Newt. What's the scoop? We back in this thing. Yeah, man. And we got a special guest today for on, on our show. We had the one, the only, the man with the plan, the running back of the best. Yes, sir. Kendall Milton, what's cracking, bro? Kendall, what's I know, good, man? Appreciate y'all. Appreciate yes, y'all. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. You know, you know how we do it, man. You know, we got to get the best of the best, and you definitely it. You feel me? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, man. So listen, if y'all do not know, and you do not know who this man is, please, please. look in the background and see what this man's skill is, man. Please, he is the Elite. best. Elite. Elite. Elite talent. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So major. So tell me about yourself, Kendall, man. Oh man, I just been working, you know, with Trayvon Jones over at T One. Get ready, be on the off season right now, so it's just grind time. That, I, I love to hear that, man. Shout out, shout out to Trayvon out there, man. Trayvon yeah, Jones out of T One. You already know, man. City definitely for real, for real. Big salute, bro. So tell me your your process on how what is your off season like compared to anybody else's? Because you have to be you you are you're the best of the best. Mm-hmm. So what is your training situation like? Because I know Trayvon got you out there. Work it. <laughs> yeah. You know, my off season, it's not like everybody else's off season where they after the season they take, you know, two, three weeks off. It's right after the season, I'm back in the weight room, back on the field with Trayvon. Cause, you know, I got to go to gotta go to the camp season, gotta get ready, have a, you know, dominant senior year. So right after the season I'm with him on the field, uh, in the facility every day, just getting work getting work, getting better. I love to hear that, man. <laughs> exactly. Let, let's talk about, man, you being elite and you being the top prospect. So where does like rivals have you. Where the scout got you ranked? You know what I mean? Uh, they got me ranked right now overall, 12th player in the nation, number two running back in the nation, and uh, number four, play, no, number three player in Cali. <laughs> time, time. Y'all, y'all heard that? Bro, hold on, wait, wait. wait no you, regular, no yeah. basic. This ain't no, this ain't your typical running back, all right? Man, wait, can you please repeat that one more time? One so, more that time. Way, so that way everybody understand where you are on the totem pole. Uh, right now, number two running back in the country and number three player in California. You feel me? Hey, hey, y'all heard that? <laughs> hey, in Fresno, he he from the city. He too. from the city, bro. You heard the valley. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, man, so tell me about yo yo rise to stardom because back in the day, you you were you were leading elementary school, you were elite in middle school, and now it's just all trickling down to your yo yo senior yeah. year, man. So. Yeah. I mean, the whole time through the upcoming, it's just been the people around me. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been uh, growing up with athletes, you know, D1 level athletes. I was working out with D1 level athletes when I was in the fourth grade. So I already had that mindset of, you know, once you're on the field, like, you can't turn back. Like, you got to put in everything you got. Absolutely. So, you know, I got that mindset in, like, fourth grade. And, you know, every time I've been on the field, whether it's in a weight room with my team, you know, I have that mindset that the dude next to me, I'm going to make him work. So, you know. We could compete and we're going to make each other better. Absolutely. So that's been what, you know, got me to the point where I'm at to where every time I'm there, you know, I had that mindset, you know, give it your all. Yeah. That's, now, a, that's a great mindset. So you was, you was born in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know most what I'm definitely. saying? So you kind of, at what age or what grade did you kind of say, like, like, this is what I want to do? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I would say. You're doing it at a high level. Uh-huh. I would say probably sixth grade, I realized that I want to live this out because, you know, Growing up, I was just playing this game just to play. I was good at it. I was yeah. having fun. So, you know, I got to sixth grade, and I was like, you know what? That's when I started watching NFL, college football, and I was like, you know what? You know, I could really do something with this. I could, oh, yeah. I could make an impact. You know, with my skills, I can use that to make an impact on my community, impact on people, impact on the youth. So, I, that was when I, you know, realized that's what I want to do. That's huge. That's great, man. Man, did man, did you hear the key point on that? He said, impact the youth. That that's that's so major that a lot of that a lot of athletes they don't realize and recognize that when you have a big name for yourself, everybody looks up to you. Especially the young, every young player. They all look at. They go to the high school games. They go, oh bro, I'm trying to be like Kendall. I'm trying to be like Kendall, bro. Look at his moves. Bam, bam, bam. And then it's like then now you're the 
instead of them saying, I want to be like Mike, I want to be like Kendall. Yes, sir. Bro, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel amazing. You know, every day I have kids in my uh, Instagram DMs, Twitter DMs, constantly asking, what do you do every day? How do you get this good? How do you maintain school and athletics? And, you know, to me, that's a huge blessing because that makes me realize people look up to me. Mm -hmm. People uh, view me as a role model. So, you know, every day I have that in my mind that what I do is always being watched. Somebody always going somebody always gonna to try to bring me down off of what I do. So, you know, every day I just try to impact, impact the kids, impact the youth trying to, you know, make the way for everybody else to, you know, show them what you got to do to be successful. Absolutely. In whatever field, don't got to be, it don't got to be football. Right. It could be athletics, anything with academics, just, you know, how to be successful just in life, period. Absolutely, exactly. absolutely. Do you do you feel any pressure? Is it pressure? Or is uh, it just, it's something like, you know what I mean, the spotlight is on you and you kind of like, you know what I mean, you, you draw into it, you embrace it. Is it more of an embrace, embracement type of thing, or do you feel the pressure sometimes? Does it ever get to you? Uh, I don't really feel pressure at all. You know, right now I'm just I'm just trying to be the best me, period. Yeah. Uh, I just embrace the situation, embrace all the blessings God has given me from, cause, you know, he's blessed me with a lot of opportunities on different stages, so I just embrace all those and, you know, try to play. I play in his name, so I'm playing for him. Absolutely. So that's, that's I, don't, I don't let the pressure get to me at all. That's, that's big. Now, with you have with you being the number three player in the state of California, there has to be a endless list of offers, bro. Can you tell me at least some some of the offers you got? Uh, yeah, I got uh, <laughs> Alabama, LSU, Ohio State, Georgia. Uh, you know, schools like that. Oklahoma, <laughs> Texas. Do you do you have a top five, top ten, top three uh, right now? Well, right now, just... yeah, right now I'm doing all my unofficial visits so I can be able to narrow it down to the top five. So I already finished Oregon, finished Oklahoma, finished Texas, and then I still got to go to Ohio State. I'm going to uh, Georgia, Alabama, and LSU. Yeah, unofficials. Then I'm them all down. them all majors. Them ain't no poop butt schools, you know? <laughs> right, bro. right? Them, them, them majors. Them all them somebody dream schools. Each right. one, not for real for real. You know what I'm saying? So that's mm -hmm. that's big, and you you've earned that right to you know what I mean. Get the get the exposure and get the opportunity to to go to whatever school you decide to go to because you actually put in that work. And, you know what I mean, you've been consistent, you know sure. what I'm saying? You're not a mediocre player, you know what I mean? I've watched your highlights, you know what I mean? Seen some of your games, and every game, like you said, you play, you play in God's honor, and you try to go out there and put it all on the line. And, and that's always big, no matter if you're from Fresno or know where you are, I always like an athlete that every time they step on whatever field they're on, they just go hard, man. Mm -hmm. So it's it's cool. It's always cool watching you play, man. It's appreciate definitely that. exciting, man. Yes, sir, I appreciate that most definitely. Now, now, another question I got for you is – when you're how do i word it when you're what separates you from every other running back in the entire world i'm i'm, oh. I'm gonna say i'm gonna say i'm gonna say world because this is a global scale and mm -hmm. everybody you're in your household name across the country but yeah people like people know you worldwide uh i would so, say yeah. what separates me uh I'd probably say my uh, combination between my size and also my ability to move. Oh, ooh, wait, hold on, know. hold on, hold on. How, how big are yeah, you? Yeah, let's, like, let's, do the, let's, let's do a, sta let's do a stat sheet on, on how big yeah, your big, all of that. Uh, I'm 6'2", 220. Wow. But did y'all just hear that? 6'2", <laughs> 220, he like, mm, get yeah. off me. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. especially being that big, running a 4'5", 340. You know, it just it opens a lot of doors because not a lot of people can be that big and move that fast, be able to – make those quick cuts. So I would say, you know, my combination of my size and my ability to move on the field, that's probably what, you know, separates me from all the other running back. God damn, man. That's, that's crazy, 6'2", 220. If I'm playing corner, <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, I Ankles, don't wanna, huh? I don't wanna be in the way. I'm, I'm grabbing shoelaces, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, all that. And, and, what, I mean, and what's crazy is when they when they played there, I saw I was at the game, I watched them, I, I, watched, I was watching them run, like, De La Salle ain't no punks. Everybody know who the hell De La Salle is, right? They tough as hell. Bro, right. And so when he was sitting there breaking the runs, coming up, especially he broke one up the middle that was like, huh. It was like one of those. <laughs> he was running and like I saw I saw the safety was like kind of nervous to tackle him. And I was sitting there like, Whoa, you made him, you made him like shiver a little bit. And I was like, like he thought about it. Yeah, like, but he was oh, like, oh, damn. damn. Yeah, like <laughs> And he just and he just ran through like oh, get off me and I'm out of there and then nobody and nobody in clear space could catch you. That's what was crazy. I was like, bro, like that's that's different. Like that's different, different. Because a lot of people talk about athletes like being different when it comes to big games like mm -hmm. that. And a lot of those players, they just play average. Hey, especially yeah. especially a game like that. You know that whole week in practice, 
there's always those kids playing De La Salle, number eight. People was like, oh, like, like they playing scared. Yeah. And for me, that was like an opportunity to basically show, like, tell them what I got basically because playing around the area, we play good teams, but we haven't played no nationally ranked teams. Exactly. So, you know, that was, for me, for me, Jalen Cropper, Brock Jones, all big names, we looked at that We looked at that as opportunities to basically show how good we really are. I, and right. I, I feel like we did that. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. If y'all man, if y'all didn't when I was when I was at the, when I was at the game, I'm telling y'all now because I know a lot of y'all were there. Yeah. When 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 you see when you saw Kendall elevating his game, that like it was it was like you knew for sure he was like, bro, he's something like special because everybody in the game, even on the other team, even on De La Salle, they were you had some guys that had had notoriety, they had their little clout per se, but. Yeah. but you if, if people didn't know who you were at that point, well, you opened up eyes yes, like eyes yeah. for real. With with that being said, sometimes you know what I mean. Is is it is it hard? I know some people didn't get a perspective of oh he's from Fresno to Central Valley like you just said. Oh they don't play anybody. Like you're for real. Yeah. Like I want people to know like you you for real. No matter who you playing against, like you know what I mean. Hey Kendall's legit, y'all. All right, he's a, he's a real deal. No matter who's on the field, there. he's legit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, definitely. There. So, who do you who do you think would be your biggest influences? That from even at a young age, who in, who helped you and molded you to be the man that you are today? Uh, I would say a big part is my brother. You know, mm -hmm. he uh, he took the JUCO route out of high school, uh, lit his dream playing uh, D1 football. Now doing his grad year. So for me. I looked at that as, you know, he came out, faced some huge adversity, right. uh, overcame that, lived his dream, did everything he wanted to do, and now going further, you know, getting get doing his grad year right now in Colorado. So, for me, that's probably the biggest one. And also, uh, Trayvon Jones, like I said, T1, he also went through a lot growing up, you know, had some tough situations. Absolutely. But, you know, right now he's motivating the youth of Fresno. He's getting those kids on the field, keeping them out of all that trouble. Exactly. So I would say those two are two pretty big uh, influences. So who is, who is T1? Who is Trayvon you, outside of him just being a trainer? Can you kind of elaborate on who he's been in your life? Uh, I don't really look at Trayvon as just a trainer. I look at him as a brother type of thing. Because, you know, for him, he's, he's the type of person that I can basically talk to about anything. And, you know, I can expect an honest answer. It's not just like, not just a yes man or none of that. He'll tell me, like, if I'm messing up or, you know, what I need to do better. So I look at Trayvon as a brother type figure because, yeah. you know, he's, he's always at all of our family uh, functions and all that. So Trayvon, I consider him family. Yeah, so he, like you said, he a big brother who's somebody who can always keep it 100 with you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not somebody who's just there because you know because oh, my name and yeah, all exactly. this yeah, not yeah. just oh I'm, I'm with kendall now nah, he nah, i mean he he wants your, he has your best interest yeah you know what I'm saying? So, he wants me to succeed so that's that's something that's yeah, big yeah. to me so if you're out there running soft you, oh yeah, oh, yeah he, trayvon gonna have yeah. some work for uh -huh. you for sure uh -huh. oh for sure for sure and trayvon for sure. especially type person he is you know if we out there competing he gonna hop in and compete with us to push us that that yeah. much further so to me that's big if your trainer gonna if he gonna go out of his way to compete with you to make you better, that's something that's that's huge to me. Yeah, that's definitely somebody who who cares, who uh -huh. genuinely cares. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not just you know capping. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I care. Nah, he out there. Like nah, I really care. Like I'm exactly. gonna get on. If I gotta run these wind sprints with you, we, we gonna <laughs> do just that. Exactly. exactly. Hell live. yeah. That's live. Yeah, man. I mean, all right. What else? Uh, favorite favorite football player of uh, all time. All time. I like watching Le'Veon Bell play. Mm, that's you know, a good one. Yeah, that, that's a dude like me. He's a big back, but the way the way he moves through the holes, his patience. Uh, that's just it's something that you can't in the film room. You can't just prepare for that in the film room. Exactly, because yeah. he's he's a person that he'll hurdle you, he'll truck you, he'll juke you, he'll outrun you. He he the complete back. So that's that's my favorite player to watch. Ooh, we leaving how Bill, man, that's a boy. Now, in, now, what the situation that's going on in the NFL right now? What would, where would you like to see him? Maybe on Bill. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he would feel good, and the, if they say he went to like the Chargers, where they have him and Melvin Gordon run the two back set, mm. especially mm. along with the, the experience on that team, mm. that'd be a good move for him, in my opinion. But you know, I feel like he gonna go to where the best opportunity is, like. He the best back in the league, in my opinion. So he need go, he need to go somewhere where they gonna pay him, pay him his worth. 
Exactly. I'm yeah. just, I was just about to ask you that. So you think his his decision to sit out this year? Do you think that was a selfish move, or you think that was more of on on his side of things that he it was a business move? And he was yeah. trying to just get his full worth or what he deserved. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I would say it's a business move. Me personally, I wouldn't have done that because that's money you can't get back. He could he could have made like eight million and still, you know, yeah. been playing, but. I, I see where he's coming from. He's running back as a short lifespan in the NFL. Yeah. So it, while you're there, you got to basically make your worth. And he's a top running back that produced a lot for that team. And, you know, I feel like for him it was a, it was a pretty good move to sit out because now I feel like the teams will now pay him, pay him his worth wherever yeah. he goes. So I feel like it was my move. What's, what's your, your running style? Like who, who would you compare your game to, like, you know, would you compare it to Le'Veon, Marshawn, or? Uh, I would say my running style is more like Leonard Fournette type. Because, okay. you know, that big back, uh, he's a fast dude, fast, powerful dude, but he'll also make you miss out of the backfield. So mm -hmm. I feel like my running, file, my running style uh, correlates with his the most I have yes. any. So that's league. why that safety from, uh, yeah, that's why he froze up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why he froze up. That's why he froze up. For real, man, because Leonard, For bro, Leonard, uh, Leonard Fournette, bro. Oh my goodness! Especially out of the LSU. Oh yeah, bro, he was a monster. He was a dog. He was a yeah. dog. Yeah, bro, a monster. Just relentless. Just downhill, like. No, nobody stopping him. Right. No, all gas, no brakes. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 what do you do? You know what I'm saying? It's right. Like, yeah, oh yeah, man. Coach talking about wrap up. Ain't no wrap up. Man, ain't no wrap up here, no. yeah, man. <laughs> what you think? What you yeah. think going on? Exactly. For real, for real. All right, you think we need to go to commercial break? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna break. take a uh, we're gonna take a quick break. Um, Kendall's gonna be right back with us. We're gonna yep. be yeah, tuned in and we, we all locked in. We locked so, in. All right, man. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. We back to the Age of the Dawn podcast show. You. Yeah. You know, we got my man Noob in the corner chilling. What's good? What's good? We and back. you know, we got you know we got the man with the plan right here, What's Kendall. Good? What's yeah, good? man, Kendall Milton, man. Yes, if sir. you don't know, yeah. you better ask somebody. So, man, let's get let's break down this little this little news that's been going around, sprinkling around the the uh, the internet. Uh, my dog Tristan Thompson, <laughs> Chloe Kardashian, Jordan Woods situation. What y'all what y'all what, what feel about what's that? What's going on? Bro, basically, all right, so if y'all don't know by now. I need the details. Let okay. Me, so, me, I need all the details. So, apparently, Jordan Woods was out at the club um, with her little girlfriends or whatever, and Tristan Thompson was there, too, which, if y'all know, Tristan Thompson is the baby father of Khloe Kardashian and her baby. So, they was at the club. Well, they weren't together, but they were at the club, and then afterwards, after the club, they, uh, a bunch of people, they were going to Tristan's house, and Jordan was like, okay, look, we'll go, and then her friends were talking about, let's go. He, she was like, okay, whatever. That's yeah. that's my best friend's, you know. That's her. That's my best friend's sister's baby daddy. So like, it's cool. It's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. And then apparently that was the what the word on the street was was that he was in he was sleeping around with Jordan, and then it became a big thing because she left the house at like seven in the morning. Wait, right, which which you know if you I mean which you know if the, if that's what the situation is, it's kind of sketch. Yeah, it is kind of sketch. I but don't, I don't know about that one. Yeah. They, they supposed to be like friends, like yeah. sisters. Yeah, cause cause it was close. Yeah, cause Jordan, cause Jordan Woods. Like best she babysit they they kid. I, mean, I I would think so, cause Jordan Woods is best friends with. So she didn't been in the house. She didn't been at the house before. Wait, their best friend like Jordan's best friends with Kylie Jenner. Like mm -hmm. them them one and ones. Like uh -oh. for real, for real. Wow, that's, so, that's crazy. So right now it's like turmoil, but I really believe that Chris Jenner is behind all of this. Like, you think so? bro, she's the puppet master, but she's the guru of the drama, like, right? Of, of social media mix, drama, yeah. bro. What? Like, she made a living off of this, that's and right. I mean, but 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 that's <laughs> she my made a living. <laughs> but but that's my opinion on it. Um, but what what about y'all? What is y'all opinions? My, on my it? perspective is though, like that's crazy you say that though, because the Kardashians been kind of quiet. Uh -huh. They've been real quiet. It's kind of everything been smoothing over. Kanye been chilling out just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And then you got they talking about Travi cheating too. Oh, I <clears> seen that. I seen yeah, that. Yeah, I'm like. Is Kanye next? Like, right. <laughs> like, what's going on? Is they just finna break up the whole little family, little social family they had going Hell on? Yeah, like, it, is it over now? I don't know. Ken, what you think, bro? I mean, I think it's all just for uh, publicity. That's how they got famous, all this social media. 
uh, they got famous off of drama. Exactly. Um, exactly. I think that this is just like just for the clout. So I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you agree <laughs> with me, man. Cause me me and my girl we've been having a whole conversation about this, and she she thinking that oh well it's just a normal situation. Like no, it's not normal. I mean it's wrong, but. This is a lot of puppetry going on because yeah. Jordan went on the show with uh, Jada Pickett, The Red Table. I seen that. And she had her little interview and she was all like sad. I mean, but you could tell she was trying to speak her truth. But she's was... hiding something too. Exactly. Yeah. She's she's hiding. Some, she tried to say like, nah, I wasn't like that. I just got a, a kiss good night or something like that. Like what? Like how you get a, like how? <laughs> Excuse me? Like how do you get a kiss? How do you get a kiss good night? Yeah, on the like, lips though, like a peck, but like like that, and that's not awkward. That's that, some awkward. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, some awkward shit, right? Yeah, like, that's <laughs> awkward, bro. Like definitely some going on. I, I don't know exactly, but some going on. I'm, I'm waiting for it all to come out the world. I, 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 Twitter, I'm, Twitter going to talk about it. Yeah. Instagram going to talk about it. It's going to be crazy. I'm already knowing. And bro. you know my dog Tristan, he he in the cuts like quiet as yeah, hell. He like like <laughs> he like bro, I'm I'm just caught, bro. Like it's it like damn, like I'm out. Damn, it wasn't stuck, me. He's stuck. <laughs> It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. Oh, speak, bro. Speaking, of, speaking of that as well. In the news, they let my dog, uh, Sean Oakman, I've seen that. out of that jam. They let him out. Yeah, yeah, like because he he was on allegation charges of like raping of uh, raping one of his like female friends, but yeah, it wasn't that. That's not what it was. It was like it, they was like con it was a consensual relations and those things but she called a she called the, the r word and yeah you gotta be man that's a real touchy touchy mm -hmm. subject man. yeah right like, yeah definitely for all the the men out there and young men you know i mean hey y'all definitely be careful with the decisions mm -hmm. y'all make when y'all go out to these parties and clubs and stuff man. absolutely make sure you know what i'm saying because especially like i mean like when you got something good going for yourself people look at you as an asset you know what i'm saying so and once they look at you like that and you forget that you know what I mean? You're an easy lick. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. If, if y'all don't understand the easy lick is, that's an easy come up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and definitely, like, all, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to throw shots at the females and the ladies, but, you know what I mean? Y'all do be trying to come up. And I, I respect it. You know what I'm saying? Get it how you live. I ain't, you know what I mean? Whatever you do is what you do. But for all my, you know what I mean, young men out there, for all my dogs, y'all be careful, man. Y'all peep game, man. Definitely peep game. So... I know, I know. With, um, when you go out and stuff like that, and you kick it with your uh -huh. friends, how much adversity do you face when it comes to stuff like that? Uh, I mean, for me, I don't really go out like that because people are always trying to take pictures. People are always trying to do all this stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, so I feel people, that. You feel me? Pe people, like, people, yeah. like, like I said before earlier on, people they gonna try to bring you down any way possible, whether it's through a picture, whether it's this, whether it's that. Right. So you know, I, I usually just hang with a small group, hang with Cropper, hang with hang with people like that. People who you know. All right, a high level too. Who got a lot exactly. going for him? So. Exactly. Birds of a yeah. feather flock together. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Say that. Got to keep your circle yeah. tight, and you know what I mean. Be with people who who are on the same hype as you. You know what I mean? For real. Who trying yeah. to better you? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Somebody that's gonna push you in your circle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the type of people you definitely exactly. want to have around you. A lot of people, and a lot of people don't realize like how much that means. Here, from like especially somebody like me hearing that from him, that that should say something because a lot of people get caught up into the. That, that that kind of realm and then they fall victim to mm -hmm. bullshit yep. like you feel me yeah and definitely. and and then it's like oh man I, I i put myself in a hole that i really can't get out of yeah, and then exactly. it's like it's like you should have never been around a b and c anyway exactly, exactly. i think yeah. your your camp your team and your family your friends whoever around you definitely got to be solid because it, it, it comes to a point to where you know what i'm saying if you know what i mean you don't want to you want to be yourself mm -hmm. i mean you never want to get out of your your realm you know what i mean you exactly. always want to be yourself and, and stay true to who you are you know what i'm saying if you're not you know what i mean if you're not a drinker or you're not a spark that's something you don't do or, you know what i mean don't do it exactly. you know what i'm saying exactly. make the proper decisions to where you say you know what hey that ain't me y'all mm -hmm. go ahead and do what y'all do i'm gonna be me you know what i'm exactly. saying don't let nobody else peer pressure you into something you don't want to do you know what i mean and that's what people always respect you for is being genuine to who you are you know what i'm saying Period. You know what I mean, like every time you see me, like, like I'm gonna have on some new kicks. Like I'm gonna be, you know what I mean, bust down. Like I like kicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I ain't gonna never switch up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna always be me, no matter what. Period, man. And that's where you get all the most love at when you get those those when people and people remember you by being that humble individual that like that and they think like, oh, he's an outstanding young man. He does what the right things in the community, and then it all and it comes back tenfold for you in the long run. It's all exactly. about universal karma. Yeah. Sir. So yeah, yes, sir. exactly. I think your your character 
you know what I mean, per prestige, you know what I'm saying? I think your, your character is big and, and your reputation. That's something like you definitely always want to be nails on and be consistent on. Because, you know what I mean, one little slip, like it could, it could end it all. Bro, mm -hmm. whole life done. Yeah, whole life like, done. Speaking, because we got an athlete on the set, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I definitely say it's a lot of uh, like attention on like on athletes. Like, you got if you go back in time, you got Kobe, the Kobe situation, fact, different thing like that. That's it's hard to re recover from situations yeah. like that, but I think you got to know ahead of time, like just to try to stay away from that. Uh, you know what I mean? Because yeah. especially especially being an athlete too, you know, you at a high level, you held to a higher standard. People exactly. people ain't gonna treat you like the you know average person. Period. They gonna try to catch you slipping, try, trying to catch you doing something you're not supposed to do. It's easy. So I feel like being an athlete, when you go out, you gotta have that in your mind that everybody around here, like they gonna they gonna try to give me or some type like that. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. You, you can't be game goofy. You uh -huh. know what I mean, you exactly. got you already gotta know. You know what I'm saying? Cause yo, if Kendall shoes on tie, somebody be like, hey, Kendall shoes on tie, y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. For real. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, he walking around his shoes on top. Right. Like, that's crazy. But, you know I mean? It's like that. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, man. But but shout out shout out to being an upstanding young man and an upstanding young lady, woman, all of that. Because if it's all about character. And if you bring your character up, it'll follow It'll follow you throughout the rest of your life. Exactly. Period. Exactly. That's, that's without a doubt, man. Stay true to yourselves out there, man, and, and keep the negativity out of y'all lives, man. Stress free, man. Be blessed. Uh, oh, so. yeah, man. Man, let's get into this hype beast conversation, <laughs> man. Man, So, I'm going to tell y'all, everybody at this round table, we all like kicks. I'm going to tell yeah. you that right now. Let me see. Look, okay, look, I yeah. see what y'all yeah, got yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see how y'all coming. I see how y'all yeah, coming. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man. Everybody on this table likes kicks, and I'm a a huge advocate of, of being a sneakerhead, whatever you want to call it, man. This man, Noop, over here, dog. I'm going to tell you hey, right hey, now. Don't tell me. <laughs> hey, Don, Don, what you got on, though? Let me, what you got on? Let them, man, they can't see the feet, man, I, uh, Some Olympic sevens, bro. They, they not nothing. Them, them, them nothings. <laughs> right. All right. What, what you got on, Kendall? Conquer 11s. You already know. Say Easy. I, I got some Pharrell NMDs on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's just light today. <laughs> I'm, just trying to stay, I'm just trying to stay comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Talking about some comfortable, boy. Yo, you got some hype. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I do. I do. I love kicks, man. I always got a man. Crazy Air Max, Air Max Day coming up. I, I can't wait. I mean, I can't wait to break out on Sean Witherspoon. Yeah, I, you feel I can't wait. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Kendall, what's your what's your favorite shoe of all time? Uh, of all time, I like favorite a, silhouette. I like Elevens. You 11s. know, Elevens me. Those shoes you wear with every outfit. You know, yeah. they just pop with everything. They got the nice style. You know, the uh, the, the what's it called? The patent leather, yeah, yeah, the patent pat leather, leather that, that really does it though. For real, For they, real. They, especially when you have it shining and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. bad. That's that showstopper, man. Cause I remember, I remember pulling up to my prom. Not uh, when I was back in high school. I had the, you feel me? I had the uh, what's the bread? The bread eleven. Uh -huh. Ooh. <sighs> you I thought I was, prom? Yeah, bro. Hey, I That's thought I was. Different. Hey, I thought That's I was doing. Bro, I, hey, I thought I was doing something, but then. Then I seen somebody else pull up. They had. They had some. Uh, That's when I first seen like red bottoms. I was like. <laughs> what are these? Like, hold, hold on, like, hold yeah. on. I think, Change the game. I right. think Don Luke was the you was the first one really. You and uh, the homie John Boy was really the first ones to start bringing out like designer kicks. Who was really rocking them, oh. and I was like, because I I'm, I'm in his shoes, but I wasn't really into like designer kicks, and I was kind of was like. What, what, I mean, what's those? Like, those oh, man. Clean, you know shout out, shout out to big bro John Boy, man. You already know, salute to the real one, man. But yeah, but to be but to be honest, when I found out, when I, I started getting put on more and more, because I thought I was really one sided to just like Gucci just shoes, sneakers, yeah, like, just sneakers, yeah. right? But but my lady, she put me on to everything, and I was like. This is me. And hey, your lady really be the one because she knows you. you know what I mean, she right. Know what, what she knows what good in. You know what I mean? Exactly, bro. I'm all my young followers, my bo my my dude followers, take advice from the girls, bro. If they tell you they like something, repeat their advice. Do it. You know I'm saying, please if, do if she, it. Hey, if she say get a boosie fade, go get a boosie <laughs> fade. Oh God, that's what she like. Just go do oh, it. Don't God. ask no questions. Just go get the boosie fade and rock with it, man. For real, for real. So you, so you saying eleven is your favorite of all time? Yeah, easily. Okay, what about your, uh, what about your favorite designer kicks? Like, I, cause I know you got some yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah we, we know. Uh, <laughs> I was I like Balenciagas. Mm -hmm. Okay. The runners? Yeah. Ooh. Especially, especially when you get the, the all red. The, the yeah. no laces? Yeah. Ooh. Hey, it's so hard for that. Those are dirty. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm telling you right now, if my foot wasn't so fat, I'd definitely have a few of them pair, bro. My foot too. <laughs> <laughs> my foot too wide. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I thought, like, when I went and bought a pair, I was like, 
Man, I'm tripping like this. This way too much. These ain't even got no laces. They ain't got no tongue. What am I doing? It's a whole it's sock with a with a midsole. Like, what, you know what I mean? But nah, they super comfortable. Uh-huh. Like they they really. If you can go out and get a pair, get a pair. They yeah. mad comfortable. Yeah, yeah, no, and then yeah, don't trip. You know what I mean? They're a little low on the hard side of the price range, but it's it's an investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you invest in if you invest into yourself. You you'll be taken more seriously by a lot of people. Yeah. Right? That, that's, that, what I, that's what I tell people when I go buy like more expensive stuff. I say like like it's an investment because it's a timeless piece. Period. You know what I'm saying? That's something like like five years down the line. Once they stop making them, they're gonna be like like dang, I always wanted a pair of those. Like and you got them. Somebody gonna be like, let me get those off you. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying so it's gonna like you know what I mean like shoes definitely like in certain pieces like you got to make sure like get timeless pieces. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, let's go head off to the uh, to the next commercial break. Let's go. We re- refresh ourselves and we go. Get, I gotta fill up a little bit on my uh, my drink. Actually, I'm gonna put some some of this water in. in yeah, I heard you. You drink water. Yeah, a, a, a little bit. We gonna, gonna talk a little water? more. We gonna talk a little bit uh, more about uh, that. Yeah. You know, you know, I've been trying to refresh myself. You know, drop a little. You feel me, in, but oh, you getting ready for summer. A, a little bit. You know, but you know, I gotta keep the keg on me though. You know, <laughs> you gotta keep the keg. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a, look. I'm a, I'm the whole chicken, but only got the one. But only got the one wing. So you know how it is. I'm, I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make that wing show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, let's let's head off the commercial break and then we'll get back at you, man. You feel me? Welcome, welcome back to the Age of the Dumb podcast, man. You know, you tuned in, you live and direct. What's going on with everybody? What's yeah. good? What's good? Man, what's good? happening, man? So, we were just talking about yeah, this that, uh, this damn Momo challenge thing. That's been all over YouTube, the little craze of what's been sweeping the kids lately. And I honestly am, like, really spooked about this. Cause, yeah, that's scary. Yeah. I said, it, it reminded me of, uh, like, Slender Man, the movie. Right, yeah. they was like going to grab them, and like the, they was doing a little whole little internet thing, and they was starting to do little uh-huh. crazy stuff yeah. or whatever. That, yeah, that's so deep, man. That's like that's crazy. Man. So, so Kendall, explain explain to the the world what 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 is this little Momo challenge? Since you you a generational yeah. Z cat, so <laughs> you you got the better understanding of it, and so give give the world an explanation. Uh, from from what I've seen on social media, on Twitter, and all that. It's supposed to be like the kids they watching like something on YouTube or program and like halfway it just cuts off to this Momo thing that like tells you to like basically do something to like try to kill yourself or something. And from my understanding, that's all that I know. That's yeah. about it. And then like it cuts off again. It goes back to the show so like your parents don't see it or something. Yeah, man, that's that's that that that's scary. Yeah, cause, that's for real. crazy. Cause can you? Cause if that's can you ima- I mean, I know it's gonna be in the background, but can you imagine something like that is go- going on with your kids uh-huh. and? And like you, you sitting there, and it's like they watching a normal video, and then it then pops up that little scary lady talking about, "Hi, my name is Momo. Why don't you come grab a, a knife and cut upwards on your arm?" And like it's like a whole like three minutes of her talking and yeah. telling them what to do. Yeah, that's that's some brainwashing stuff. For y'all. <laughs> yeah, y'all so got kids out they should there, be young man. like that too. Yeah, I know because they, they don't. Something, they don't I mean, think about that, it. Everybody don't know the difference. Yeah. little kids don't know the difference. That's right. crazy, man. Whoever, whoever put that video, y- y'all real cruel, man. Y'all cruel, some, some real cruel. dark stuff. Y'all need to, real y'all fact. wildin'. So all the parents, so all parents that are watching, that are watching this, and they're trying to get a better understanding of what's going on, monitor what your kids watch on YouTube. Because it, stuff like that happens, and then you get to wonder, why is he doing this random bad behavior? Yeah. And just monetize it a little bit, because you, there's all kind of weird sickos that's in the world, so... Yeah, I don't definitely. Condone we, none of that. You know what yeah. I mean? We gotta we gotta protect and, and grow our youth and we gotta do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a good word of advice too. You know what I'm saying? Definitely right. monitor um what they watching and, and what they doing. Cause kids pick up on stuff fast, man. For real. I got nephews and nieces, I say, you know what I mean, a little little line or word or they listen to music with me and then they send I'll be like, Dang, I, should, I shouldn't have had that on <laughs> right, with them around. Right. You, like, you should have been like right, like Yeah, I'll be like, Ooh, let me let me just put on the radio today. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they'll be walking right, and they'll be walking around the house talking about they be like, What's my favorite word? And they be like, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and, like and then you sit over here like, nah, what? Uh, like, yeah, like, 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 what the who told like, you to say that? Where you get that from? I was with Uncle Newt. <laughs> And then the day you get the you get the earful like uh 
Like, what's going? And it's like, oh, you telling them to do that? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I'm sorry. Yeah, that my was, bad. Wasn't even me. Yeah, yeah that's man. Crazy though, man. So I want to give a, a special shout out to one of my, uh, to one of our sponsors, uh, the Enagic Team of Water. Enagic Team of Water. So, what, what I have on, on up here is basically it's purified. Al- alkaline, antioxidant, and electrolyte filled water that it reaches a, a pH level of 9.5 or better, and it refuels not necessarily just your body in, inside. It refuels your brain. It refuels your nervous system, your blood flow. Like it, it, it immediately contacts your ner- your brain, your yeah. brain and your nervous system. Mm-hmm. Now that's that's deep. Yeah, bro. And I've been and I've been I've been I've been, I've been drinking this water for a minute, but I've taken it a lot more serious lately. It it really it betters your your entire being of your body. Like it clarifies it 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 it, it knocks out all the impurities out of your pores and all of that. And it's it's really spe- yeah. it's a really special thing. It's it's really going on. Yeah. A lot of a lot of the big water companies they're trying to take advantage of it now like smart water trying to come out with like two separate bottles of it yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah they're but, doing like a a sport water thing i just see the, the ph levels yeah and then they got the uh, whatever they call the reverse osmosis you know what yeah. i'm saying so that that's big that, exactly like, that's, like that's different and for y'all who out there i know y'all people be like man it's all the same no, it's not. It's, it's not. not. It's, it's not. It's really not. And Kendall, you can explain it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. so I'm pretty Be, sure. Being an athlete, you got to drink water all the time. So <laughs> you might as well get the highest quality, in my opinion. Exactly. Look, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get you. Good. I gotta. I'm, I'm gonna put you on to some of this, man, because it, it, it's, it's something different. Like it's different, yeah. different. And then what's special about this water? It don't like. It doesn't make you feel bloated. You know how you drink like you'll chug a whole uh, couple bottle, water yeah, bottles, and you, and you be feeling yeah. like, man, bro, I gotta run this off. It won't make you feel like that. It's all. It's all good. It's it's yeah. gonna it's gonna absorb in your body real quick. But yeah, shout out to Enagic Water, that the best water possible out in the world. That, best out, best out. Yeah, if y'all y'all need some, hit me, <laughs> hit in. me, tap in. Yeah, I can. I'm, I'm gonna direct you to the line where you can get the best water in the world. Uh, and I and I quote unquote that for real, so, for real. Let's, for let's real. go back to that that topic though. Like you drinking water and like like you you talked about earlier how Le'Veon Bell and and you know what I mean as a running back you only get so many years in the NFL because mm-hmm. you you taking so many hits and yeah. so on and so forth you know what I mean so how do you keep your body healthy you got like you go to a chiropractor you got oh, yeah a- uh, for me I do cryotherapy at the uh, the bodybuilding over in Clovis uh, I go to physical therapy making sure everything say like something's hurting you know I get that yeah. taken care of uh, deep tissue massage oh, and okay th- those are the three things that I, that I uh, do the most often to keep my body you know highest I can highest it can be so I can go out on the, the field to perform. Yeah, I don't I don't I'm not in the field no more, but I might have to just come hang out with Kendall so I can get you know what I mean get a massage or something. Oh, man. I mean, it, it don't feel good though. Oh, it, yeah. it, 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 ain't, it ain't one of the normal massages you're gonna be in there hurting. So you did you did ever did like hot yoga or anything uh, like that? Yeah I I can't do the hot yoga. No nah. I'll do the regular yoga, the hot yoga. Have you in there sweating too much. I've been thinking about doing like a, a, a cycle class. I heard mm-hmm. that's where yeah. it's at. Even you know the saying? even the regular yoga I did, it was still hot in there. So like, oh, nah, and it man. was like maybe like eighty degrees. So turning that up to like one hundred five, you can be in there struggling. So yeah, nah, I'm I'm, I'm cool I'm, off that. I'm straight. So t- tell me about the uh, the cryotherapy because uh, I I used to do cryotherapy from from when I got in my accident and my hips and stuff like that, and it helped me out tremendously. Um, what is your what's your intake on it? Because I know it's like fairly yeah. new and like a lot of athletes are just starting to use it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, I first started my sophomore year when I was having hamstring issues, mm-hmm. and that was during the season, so I couldn't just you know not playing the game. So I was doing cryotherapy uh, once every day, and it would have me ready for game time. Game time, I wouldn't have any any problems. So for me, cryotherapy has done nothing but help me. Uh, it's been able to keep me healthy throughout the throughout the season be able to perform at a high level so you know it's a it's a great investment to be able to go and do that yeah. absolutely absolutely for, for the viewers out there can, give me in detail what what chirotherapy consists of uh well what, what i've what the dude that works there what he told me was it basically kind of slows down your blood flow type of thing to where you get in there it's negative 220 uh you get in there for about three minutes uh right when you get out your blood it just starts immediately flowing. You get new uh, blood cells going That's to the right. area, so so it's almost like you you shocking and freezing your whole body. Yeah, and then, and then once you, you get once you get out, out 
you revitalize. Yeah, new blood goes to say my hamstring was hurting. New blood goes to the hamstring. You know, gets in, repairs it. So that's that's crazy. That 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 is so crazy because the first time I ever seen cryotherapy was, I think I seen a clip on like Instagram with LeBron James maybe like two uh-huh. years ago. Yeah. I think I seen that one. Yeah, and I like he was up in there, and, he, and, and LeBron James is a huge Six, dude. Eight. Yeah, <laughs> bro, he huge. So he sit up in there like, woo, this shit. And he's like, bro, it's cold. Yeah. And so I was like, bro, like, what, what is this? And then, but he was at his peak, mm-hmm. like a playing ability. So I was, still, I'm like. Bro, is this like really for real? Cause he, I mean, cause you know LeBron's getting on the older side now, but he's still the man. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. like him using that, and then like the way he he play, it's like it's to me it's baffling. I'm like, yeah. bro, like. Yeah. Yeah, like I said before, with the uh, the bodybuilding, uh, it's a place uh, on knees right over there by Buchanan, mm-hmm. and they have it's not just cryo; they have like everything. They got a, a chiropractor in there. So it's, it's basically a place that's just meant for basically rehabbing your body, getting mm-hmm. your body back in full tack. They got uh, two cryo tanks. Uh, one of them even kind of locks you in and plays you whatever song you want. So it's that's not live. Even, so it's you, not, on yeah, yeah. you get on the ox. So, so it's not even like you just in there just like bored. Right. So you know they got everything. It's a place that's definitely if you're an athlete in Central Valley, they need to check out. What, what's the name of the place called? Uh, the Bodybuilding. Oh, The Bodybuilding. The Bodybuilding. So, y'all. listen, all young athletes out there that need to get a little fix on their body, they got a little nick, nicks and bruises and things, mm-hmm. check it out. The Bodybuilding. Yeah. Yes, sir. Keep your body intact. Mm-hmm. Got yeah, you. Man. What's, yeah, what's man. What's up? Can I see you got this uh, this Texas video <laughs> on? You, you know what I'm saying? You you told me, you, you, you know what I mean? You, you taking your unofficials and stuff uh, you ain't had no. Did you just grab this hoodie? Oh, you know yeah. I, mean? I, I just grabbed this on the way out the door. Uh, you know, when I was in Texas, I just got back from Oklahoma and Texas. Took those visits, so you know I had to grab a, yeah, grab they, a smooth uh, hoodie. Yeah, because they definitely rivalries. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying yeah. I've been seeing a lot of uh, between the coaches and and, and uh, the recruiting and analysis and everything. They've been oh, they, sub, they go they've at been it. sub to each other. Hey, it's, they been, go. it's been funny though. <laughs> Yeah, that's, a, that's a big game though. That's a big game. That that rivalry. That Red River yeah. Classic. Yep. Yeah. Huge. That, that's a that game. They they get after it. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, man. When uh, especially this year when Texas came out and they they stomped on him a little bit. I they was did. Like, I, I was, was like, like oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a I minute. Like, I was like, the low horn back. I'm yeah. like, okay, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, Texas. Especially being out there uh, talking to the coaching staff because uh, they got a new staff over there in Texas. Mm-hmm. So that whole, that whole staff they got a new. Uh, like view of the game of football, they they trying to get every position. They said they were lacking uh, positions while they while they got there, mm. so they let me know they was bringing the new positions basically all over the field to basically bring back that uh, that name Texas used to hold in college football that right. dom- that dominant team. Yeah. Right. So you know Texas is definitely a team that's on the up and up and. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the the Big Twelve kind of been dominated by Oklahoma. They've been kind of running the yeah. tables for like the last three years. Yeah. But like like you said, Texas, it'll be interesting if they get back to that mode. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? When they had Vince Young, yeah, and they had Huff, they had a, a ton of dudes, hey, man, that could that could really yeah. ball. Hey, don't remind me, I'm an SC fan. Don't. <laughs> yeah, I know you. Yeah, I know yeah, you still bitter over that yeah, loss. I'm, I'm I'm a little salty, man. That Vince game Young, is crazy though. But yeah, man. I'm, Especially to me, just seeing seeing that bowl game, uh, Texas versus Georgia. Yeah, I was expecting the whole close game, you know, yeah. get out to the end. But it seemed like Texas got out and just like didn't let off the whole time. Yeah. So, so that let me know where the where the uh, players' mindset was at, where the coaches' mindset was at. So you know that was that was a big thing for me seeing that game. For real, man, that's a whole that's a whole different kind of vibe right there. Because uh-huh. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that like. When you're like, especially in your position, like when you're deciding to school, it's like that takes a, a key part of like where's your decision mm-hmm. is. It's like the mental game, the mental game of it. Like, okay, how do these players react to these players, and yeah. how do these coaches respond to adversity compared to these coaches and different things? Yeah, yeah. 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 so that's that's a it, very exactly. Good. So, the, I mean, what are you looking for when you go on these unofficial <clears throat> visits or when you talk yeah. to coaches? Like, uh, for me, I look at a few things when it comes down to you know what it's going to come down to when I make my decision. A uh, big thing for me is depth chart because I don't want to go to a school and just yeah, you sit. You want to come right in Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to go and play as a true freshman because I'm Period. graduating early. So I'm oh. going to be out there. Uh, Shout out to you. Yeah, I'm going to be out there early getting the work in with the team because I'm, I'm going to be out there at 17. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to be out there young. So I need yeah, that's, to, that's huge. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get on the field early because I want to be one of those three and out type dudes getting to the league early. Yeah. Uh, another thing, I want to be able to go to a school that's going to look out for me after football. Because right. once it ends, I want to be able to have those connections, uh, have that marketability. 
So that's probably the second biggest thing. And then just strength of academics. Yeah, I want to be able to. So I don't want to just have a, a regular degree. I want to have a degree that like, means something that you know yeah. has a that you know has his, holds a name in the business world. So. Exactly. It's something like I mean, what what would you like to get your degree in? You know what I mean, you got a favorite uh, yeah. subject? Uh, right now I'm looking at business and finance. Okay, so definitely money. Yeah, money, exactly. money's your thing. Exactly. I, I feel you on that. Mine too. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. That, that that that's a very good that's a very good field in to be in, especially or. Well, Especially trying to get your degree in, mm -hmm. that's very, very major because there's not a lot of people who really are good with money anymore. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, yeah. That's Especially for me, uh, seeing the rate of people going broke after the NFL. Facts. Because my uncle, he was a, a second pick in the 1996 draft, and he's living successful right now, you know, has everything intact. So, I want to be able to live like that. I don't want to have those, you know, those few short years of fun and then go downhill. Period. So, you know, I want to be able to, you know, be smart with money, be responsible with money, so you know, I can wow. basically live the life I want to live. Wow. Damn, that's that's crazy. We talking about a Generation Z cat right. Right. talking about not just the moment, but after yeah, and what I'm he back. gonna do. You know what I mean, uh, investment. That's exactly. that's why exactly. Kendall is elite. We're not just talking about playing football and being on the field. Like, like mentally, I think you're really mature. Exactly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and your your vision and where you want to be in the next. What three to five years is, mm -hmm. is is crazy at your age that you know like this is exactly what I want to do and you kind of know you already know the expectation yeah, and the standard do. to to get there you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying so yeah that's yeah. crazy man yeah. Yeah. especially when I went to uh, Oklahoma I got to sit down with the president of the school and that dude he's a he's the third richest person in America or something like that so this dude <laughs> this this dude's a billionaire and he he let me know like through the come that's up that's crazy. Yeah. He let me know through the come up. You can't you can't cheat the come up. If you if you want to be successful, if you want to get what you need, you can't just cheat it because it's, it's gonna catch up to you eventually. Yeah. So, that, so that's something that you know stuck with me in my mind that yeah. Like if you want to get something, you got to get through it, get there through hard work. There's gonna be adversity, but it's about how you overcome the adversity and how you basically come out on top. So that stuck with me big time. That's yeah. why it's tattered on my arm, baby. Adversity, you it's gotta sad. fight you through did. all of it, baby. You gotta fight yeah. through all of it. Sure. Yeah, I feel it on that. Oh, man, we're going to take another quick break um, going on right now. Let me go ahead and refill on my cup, man, and we're going to get back at you, man. We got the number three right, player right. in the state of California with us, so keep tuning in and understanding where his mindset is. You'll learn something. Right. You did. I do it a Tuesday in the Philly, you already know I do it, man. We go ooh, yeah. stupid, ooh. nigga, easy, we, we go dumb. dumb. Everybody know where we turn up, but where you from, nigga? This California ain't no business where I landed at. Everybody wanna see the way how we do it, nigga? You already know we spazzing that. Nigga, get the trigger, nigga, get the eagle sticky on. We put it in the back. Nigga, the fence, go and get a double cup, nigga. We back, we back, tuned in live. And in fact, thank you for tuning in to Age of the Dawn podcast with my man Noop and my man Kendall. What's good? We Nelson back. in the building, man. Yeah. So. We talked about your hype beast. We talked about your 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 rise to stardom. Tell me about your music choices, man. Uh, I keep my music. I listen to two rappers mostly. I listen to NBA YoungBoy and Lil Baby. Wow, <clears throat> those those are the two that I keep on. YoungBoy, Baby, y'all got y'all got to get him in a, at a video or something. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm, I'm telling y'all right now. If y'all get if y'all get Ken on them videos, <laughs> it's it's instant clout, baby. Instant clout. Yeah, that's so. Oh, you ain't listening to no Cali rappers. I mean, I listen to YG. That's YG? really the only one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that's valid. Yeah, that's yeah. That's a, that's valid. a good valid choice. That's I mean, valid. I mean, cause it, a young boy just dropped the uh, he dropped the cool little tape just now, yeah. right? And I, I seen the music. I don't even know the song, but that Is it like Gangsta Fever or something. Like yeah. That? Yeah. yeah, but yeah, he been, uh, he been real consistent. Like, he do. He, he been dropping a lot. That's of why stuff. I like him, cause he yeah. drop he drop a lot of music, yeah. but it's all consistent. Yeah, exactly. For real, I can't stand when artists drop music and it's just weak. Like, come on, man, just. Take your time and just yeah. make one tape or EP. Don't be dropping uh, all yeah. this. Like I feel like when you like when you a rapper and you listen to your own music, I feel like you know when it sound good and you know when it don't sound good. Yeah. And I and I feel like NBA YoungBoy is one of them type of people. Like if he really don't like what it sound like, he's he not, not dropping. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you said Lil Baby too, right? Mm -hmm. Lil Baby one of my favorites right now. Yeah, I like, right yeah, now. Uh -huh. Yeah. He 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 hard. He yeah, hard hard. Bro, bro. Yeah. 
but uh, but a lot of people like Gunner, but and Gunner just dropped some new new, yeah. some new flame, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't like that. Yeah, so, see, for me, I don't like Gunner because like every song got the same flow, they got yeah. the same type, you know. I don't really mess with that when it's like the same thing every every single time. Right, right. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. Definitely. Like I've been listening to Gunna probably for the first drip of drowning, mm -hmm. and his new his new tape, new new album. I kind of I liked a few songs, but it wasn't right. it wasn't as hard as his yeah, old yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. We we I was I was just me and Chris. We was just talking about that. We were just talking about how Gun is a he's a fe like he's a fire featured artist. No, yeah, yeah, he's a feature. He, yeah. He, he like, like he like Quavo type of thing. Like he not gonna do it. He's not gonna drop something that's gonna be high on the charts by himself. Exactly. Like he, exactly. He's he gonna have somebody like Lil Baby on it. Somebody that could, could yeah. carry could carry the rest of the song out. Bro, because look, I think a little bit and that and that little conflict because I'm one well, there. It ain't conflict, but like that little little duo thing between them, little yeah. baby to they me. He, to, yeah, they need to go. On, here, they need yeah. to go on a concert together. Though. That'll be a wave. Lil, Lil baby is coming. He has his own concert. Is he headlining his own concert? He gonna oh, be in. Yeah, okay. He gonna be in Oakland. I want to say later on in March. Bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I might, have to, might slide up there. I might have you to feel pull up. up. I might you have to pull up. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pull up. You know for real, saying? for real, man. Yeah. And then my dog Two Chains, he just dropped some. He just dropped some. He trapper go uh, go to the league. Is that what that's what it's called? Yeah. Trap go to the league. Yeah. yeah. What's crazy about that one is I heard LeBron is like the A and R. LeBron has something to do. Something right. To do with that. That's yeah. Because they did a whole little like, like when he released the album, they did like a whole little tribute and Le and then LeBron was in there like while he was mixing and. Uh -huh. He was like, right, and LeBron was, and you know, LeBron yeah. is a big influence in the yeah, world. Exactly. So if you got LeBron James right next to you in your yeah. ear, like, bro, this slap, I'm gonna listen to this. And he definitely, uh, yeah. yes. if you follow LeBron on the gram, he he dropped the snippets when Nipsey was dropping his album, mm -hmm. when Kendrick was about to drop his. So mm -hmm. that's I always stay in tune with LeBron. He's a big he influence, knows. yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro, cause, yeah, because his, yeah, because Bron, Bron's taste in music is really, really, really nice. Like, yeah. he really got some, some nice. Tunage when it comes yeah. to mm -hmm. yeah. to music. I think that that two chains uh that that album title is, is cold though because two chains really was a hooper though. R real oh, he life, was. college yeah. too. Exactly. College. Yeah. I think it was like Georgia State or something like that. Yeah, bro. But he was a real life. But and and the dude, the dude, he was huge. a real life trapper too though. Yeah. <laughs> we we ain't gonna get into that. We ain't gonna get into that. We ain't gonna get into that, man. But I mean, you know, no cap. Yeah, but I mean, for some people in some situations, it's, it's either or and. That's what it happened, and then that's just what happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but you know, I mean, but shout out to Two Chains, shout out to Lil Baby, shout out to NBA Young Boy. Yeah. That is that. That's all who's in your in your mix currently right now. Just uh, in, just them two. Just them like for music I listen to on a consistent basis because mm -hmm. you know those are the dudes that every song I put on I know I'm gonna like it. Right. So, right, so it's it's five minutes till game time. Your last song on NBA play. Young Boy. Wait, what song? What song though? Uh, I like No Mentions. Uh, Nice. That's probably I like that song the most. Or oh, War with Us. Okay. Cause that song, Ooh. that song gets you in your, yo, get you yeah, in your song. Yeah. You no one want it. For yeah, real, yeah, man. For real. Fun. Hey, that's that's a, hey, that that's, those those are two, those are two legitimate choices. Cause a lot of people, because it's a lot of kids out here that really listen to NBA Young Boy, but they just listen to it for the hype. Uh huh. And they yeah. don't like like they don't know NBA's. Old stuff, like, yeah, and they don't yeah, like exactly. listen to him, the, but like the whole thirty eight baby, album. right, right, yeah. all yeah, exactly. right. His uh, his whole progress, his whole movement, kind of like his progression, then been it been it's been live to mm -hmm. witness him him grow as an artist, right? You know what I'm saying? For so real, definitely huge. Hey, but what y'all think about Cardi B winning rap album of the year? You know how to in it in it bad, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> hey, oh, I like Cardi, man. I, know, I, know, I, know, I was I upset. You was? I wasn't mad to the point because I was like, it's the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. the Grammys favor more of instead of not. It's like popularity type. Exactly. It's yeah. more like pop culture Especially versus like yeah. like the social media, all yeah. that. Exactly. All that, yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. If if, if I had in a cho if I had a choice on who should have won the Grammy, you know I'm gonna go with my dog Nip, man. Because I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. Nip, Nip had the the most influential album mm -hmm. I think of 2018, yeah. but. Cardi just really had the clout yeah, for it. Yeah, I'm not uh -huh. knocking like, Cardi. Yeah, don't get me I wrong, mean, though. Because, I, I mean, I, I go to a club right now, and if yeah. Cardi's slapping, and, you know, everybody going to be they, they gonna be looking, you know, the female going to be <laughs> dancing and all that. I'm like, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I ain't that, never yeah. heard nobody, you know what I mean, gig or, or start, you know what I mean, right. going up when a Cardi song come on, right. period. Yeah. So, like, I ain't right. knocking Cardi, but I was like... But then but I, I wasn't upset. On, yeah. Yeah. yeah, if it come on, it's like yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, Cardi, Cardi too. I mean, let, let's not get that misunderstanding. She, she really, she really liked the the talk of the 
of yeah. the world right now. Yeah. Yeah. She just she just sold out a show at um uh, at a rodeo. <laughs> a rodeo? Bro, she was at a rodeo. They paid her to come and like perform, right? They said in that venue, she had the most people ever in that particular venue in Dallas. Uh, really? in, in, uh, in a rodeo. 78,000 people. Sheesh. That's crazy. But That's my question. <laughs> no, you talking about rodeo? You like, talking about it was cows, you me, horses, you, bulls? You feel me? Yes, a real rodeo, bro. Like like a, a real get down Arthur Curry type deal, man. <laughs> a real get down. Yeah, a real get down. You feel yeah, me? That's like, crazy. Like she, she, but like, and then like she was in her whole rodeo get up. I'm sitting there like, yeah, Cardi, like you really, you I ain't gonna lie. I'm still with Cardi. Like her, her character is, is crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, she yeah, just, yeah, yeah. She real. She's so unpredictable. Back, she back. no filter. Like she yeah. just, she don't she care. She just Cardi. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's Cardi. Cardi, Cardi. Look. Cardi, Cardi. <laughs> oh, God. All of that. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, All of that, bro. man. All of that, man. But yeah, besides, besides, um, besides that, any nothing else really is going on. Um, the baby. Well, how do y'all feel about the baby? Hey, time out, time out. I'm, did y'all see that video? Which one? Dog. He he was at a show at a club and he was rapping, and then I don't know what happened. A fight broke out. He he still spitting his bars, sock sock coming, boom, hit him, kept rapping. No, bro. I did not. Got back see on stage. That's tight. I gotta sing that. <laughs> That's <video>. real. <laughs> I was like, hold on, hold on. I watched it like ten times, like loop well, on the loop. I, I was like, hold on, hold on. What 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 exactly just happened right now? Yeah. He hit him and then walked back on stage and didn't miss like a single lyric. Well, because well you gotta remember, well the, the baby he he's one of those kind of dudes that's like he's really he really he raps what he lives and like. His demeanor is he's a he's an alpha like yeah period. he's one of them type of dudes like if he feels disrespected he don't mind hopping on stage and like I'm gonna check you on it but mm -hmm. I mean I ain't think he was going you see what I mean I didn't think he was gonna do but, that either but I, I I like his new music I think he I think he cool like his album that just dropped right now fire yeah he got some he got some heat oh. especially with 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 the beats in the background oh. of it. He got and then he got some. He got a uh, song called Walker Texas Ranger. You know, you know how I am, man. I like my yeah. cowboy ass and and then my. What's whole crazy is a while back he he actually switched his name. I think his name was uh I think it was like it was Baby Jesus at first. Oh yeah, that was yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah. That was his original name. He came out with a video or whatever, and it and it was uh it was popping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was popping. Then he switched his name. He kind of like worked on that little first little album. Kind of uh -huh. took his time, and it came out and. He kind of taking off. I, I like his new. I it like ain't the new baby. Album. That's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, yeah. But that's been live, bro. Yeah, man. If you ain't if you ain't too yeah. into to to it, bro, go go yeah, get yeah, it. Go yeah. Yeah, go yeah, get it. Throw a few on the playlist, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Anything? Um, what's the um, what's the news on um, on your boy Wayne Melly? Uh, uh, YNW Melly. Like, I don't know. I heard. It. I think he in custody. I think he they got him locked up right yeah. now. You For know real? What I'm saying? Yeah. Did y'all hear that uh, that song? Uh, Mind yeah. on my murder. Oh, oh yeah. not yet. yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, it was like from the uh, viewpoint of that dude that was getting shot. Yeah, yeah. That was oh, wild. yeah. So you, you, I gotta watch that one. Oh man. yeah, yeah bro. Was, um, I heard the song, but I ain't seen it. Yeah, see, yeah. That 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 mind on my murder, but it it, it it took you somewhere real deep. Yeah. I was like, I made me feel bad. I was like, bro, what? And I'm it's just like the present type of thing, right? I'm just sitting there, <laughs> grabbing on my chest, I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm not, right. I hope I'm not dying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. Like, bro, he that that's when we when we were talking about last episode. We, we, you were saying you were saying like, bro, he really different. He's really changing. The, bro, he he's definitely one. I yeah. like. And what's crazy? I will never forget one of my play one of my players that uh that I that I was coaching at uh, Fresno High. He had put me. On, I dropped him off home, and he had put me on. Yeah. Like he was like, "Hey, coach, I want you to listen to this. Like, what you think about it?" He started playing that uh, that uh, murder on my mind, and I was thinking, yeah. and I was like. I was like, man, what is this? You listen, like, are you? Are, now I act like, are you okay? Like, is this? Are yeah. you fine? Is yeah. He was like, he was like, what? Cause I'm like, man, this this slap. I'm like, this man is talking about murdering somebody. What do you yeah. mean it's slap? But he was like, cause I think you really just gotta sit down and you gotta listen, listen to it. Really listen. And to it. and and I took his advice and I really sat down and I listened and I was like, oh, this is. This is deep. Yeah, like that's different. Yeah, this different, is different. 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 <laughs> For that's real. Crazy man. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So I will never forget. I'll never forget about that when I first heard. When I first heard him for the first time, I was like, Yeah, I, he he's definitely one of the ones. Oh yeah, that's crazy, man. Hey, what do you feel about? Uh, so Kobe was the first NBA player ever to win an Academy Award. So how do you feel about that? Like you was talking about your future. Is that something like you feel like? Outside of sports, you want to venture into. You talked about the community and stuff that, uh, that you. Yeah, know what for I mean? me, uh, like my whole platform of sports, I look at that as 
uh, it's my ability to imp- impact the community, mm-hmm. impact the people around me. Because you know, if you were nobody, they they might not listen to you as much. But if you if you been to the league, say you played D one ball, you know, you dominated, they gonna you know open up, hear what you got to say, hear what you've been through. Yeah. So so I feel like using that uh that platform is a big thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm honestly I'm proud of Kobe because uh-huh. while he was in the league, a lot of people thought he was a uh, Uncle Tom. Uh-huh. For real. You know what I mean? That was like, for man, real. Kobe ain't for the people. Like, he, ain't, he don't speak for us. Da, 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 da. And like, kind of when, you know what I mean? All the social injustice issues going on. Like, yeah, Kobe kind of, he touched bases on it. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and actually, when he got this award, he got up there and spoke about, you know what I mean? When um they made that comment when they was telling LeBron, you know what I mean? I, who was that? Was that, was that Trump? Yeah. They told him, or one of the uh, newscasters told him, like, basketball players only, you know what I mean? Post yeah. Them. Post a dribble or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Shut up and dribble. Yeah, just, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, and, and I mean, I think, at, like you said, the stage and the platform, is so many doors. Mm-hmm. Like, you can open not only for yourself, but others. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and just to share your perspective yeah. and your journey. Yeah, man, yeah big thing for me that I've seen with, like, LeBron, like, all the people he grew up with, he basically, like, set them up for them to succeed in their lives, though. So yeah. He, he impacted, like, so many other lives off of his success. So exactly. that's something that's, that's huge. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. That that's that's really good. I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad to see that that positive perspective on mm-hmm. that man. Because you definitely uh, as a generational Z cat, you you are definitely you're definitely positive influence, and uh, and I'm proud to see that. Yeah, yeah. So, but we are wrapping it up now. We just about done, huh? Yeah, we yeah. definitely got to got to got to shout out a few folks that's definitely yeah. supporting us and helping us do what we do. Absolutely. Shout out to Family Options. Caring results in excellence, man. Shout out to you all. Shout out to what they do in the posi- in, in the community, bringing mentally disabled adults into foster care homes. That's a very pos- that's a very good thing going on. Um, shout out to Advancing Independence. That's a nonprofit organization that helps. Fo- <clears throat> Excuse me, almost almost burped on myself. <laughs> but uh, that but that they uh provide <laughs> they provide Yo. they provide. They provide scholarship funds for mentally disabled adults and low income communities and low income individuals with with scholarship funds like helping them with furniture or any anything that that matters school funds I mean all of that like they yeah, that's they, huge man. yeah that, that that's a that's another huge Support, one man. yeah man and then also shout out to uh, Speed Success um, yes sir yeah that's that's a that's another. Uh, that's another business that we train individuals on becoming life coaches and doing different yeah. special things and we and we will start doing seminars on like different on different aspects on how to like achieve and better your personal goals into creating a plan for long term. That's a, so that's another positive exactly. thing going on. So if you're anybody interested in that, let let us know. Um, we want you guys to like, comment, subscribe. and subscribe yeah. to the YouTube page, our Instagram yeah. page, our Facebook page, our at the, uh, Age of the Dawn. Age, yeah, at the Age of the Dawn. All you gotta do is type in Age of the Dawn. We on all plat, we on most platforms. Most platforms. Yeah. If most not, pl- we coming to coming to a city near you soon. Oh yeah. Oh and uh, oh and thank thank you, Kendall, yeah, for thank coming you, to man. the show. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you. And appreciate come y'all. and coming on and, sh- and showing your perspective, man. You want to give out a shout out and give your uh, uh, Instagram and all of yeah. that. Uh, Even though you already got thirty. K followers. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> I'll say shout out Buchanan High School. Uh, shout out Trayvon T1 Sports Academy. Absolutely. And hit me on. I'm on Twitter, Instagram at the Real K Mill. So hit me on there. Absolutely, man. Yes, man. Sir. Hey, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate all our fans, followers, yeah, and supporters. Yeah, yeah. This is this is this is just the tip of the iceberg. We coming out more, and I'm, we probably gonna have Kendall back on the show, yes, sir, and we good. gonna come in. We gonna come oh, yeah. in. Yeah, we gonna oh, do yeah. a whole bunch of different things <laughs> and. Yeah, man. So I, we appreciate yeah, everybody, y'all man. Stay tuned and, and y'all like, comment, subscribe. And hey, in the comments, man, y'all tell us what topics or who y'all think y'all want on the show, man. And just let us know for real. For real. Yeah. Let us all know. We take all feedback and we all respond. We respond to all of it. So yeah, just let us know and everything. Thank you for tuning in. California caution that chronic break every burn that kind of fungus up in that you know we keep we live by slapping Mac Dre and too short we smoke a new port Mac it again feeling like Jordan it's going down in my sense kind of you know I'm whipping and no California bro we have to ever finish full fast friends know you already know we in it